This is a uh, Kawasaki Vulcan uh, gas tank lock and I want to show you how to disassemble it in this video. And the reason you might want to disassemble one is, is they're easy to disassemble and you can get five of the seven wafers or cuts for a key if you ever lose your key. So the, these locks are held together by two Phillips screws. And uh, most of the Japanese gas tank locks are like this one so you can use the information from this video to, to work on another make and model. The first thing is just remove those two, two Phillips screws. Then that outer piece comes off that reveals the two latches that latch the gas tank lock to the gas tank and they're spring loaded. There's two springs under these underneath these two latches. So don't lose those. And then there's uh, that piece just set to the side. And there's another piece here is set to the side. And underneath that piece, is there, there's four springs that you need to take out and set aside. Then you can remove the whole inner part of the, the gas cap lock. And then around the, the lock cylinder is that washer that covers a, uh, there's an O-ring underneath it, which you need to use a small, I'm using a small jeweler screwdriver just to work, get underneath it and work it out. Just doing my best not to damage the O-ring. And underneath the O-ring is a spacer that just drops out. And then underneath the spacer is a clip that holds the cylinder to the, uh, locks the cylinder to the, the shell. And this is what it looks like. It's that, it's that uh, brass colored clip pointing, the arrow's pointing to in this picture. And it's just spring loaded and I need to take that screwdriver and, and compress it and then I can pull the cylinder out. Um, and that's what I'll do here. And then I can just push the cylinder out. When you push the cylinder out, the, the wafers are spring-loaded and they'll want to pop out. And it's easy to lose them or the springs. So make sure you cover them with your thumb as you're working the cylinder out. And that's what it looks like. And that is the wafer that holds the cylinder in place. Then I'll just, I'm inserting the key here just to show you what it looks like, the wafers look like when it, the correct key is inserted. They're all level with the lock cylinder. And then I just work it back in compressing each wafer one at a time until I get the cylinder all the, all the way in the shell. And you'll hear it clip in place. And it's now locked again. And then I'll reassemble, reassemble it, put the spacer in, put the o-ring in. And then the uh, little that washer that covers the O-ring. That just sits in place, and that fell out. Now I put the four springs back in place.
and then you can't put that on wrong it just goes on one way and uh, that you can't put on wrong either I keep having to uh, the display thing on the back of the camera keeps blacking out to save conserve energy and I keep having to it bugs me to not know if I'm in the frame or not so I keep reaching behind there to tap the display and I'm putting uh, grease on here to help hold the springs in place while I put this back together and it doesn't matter which way these go on you can you can you can mix these up and it will still it will still work once I get them in place like this I just press them down in the center and kinda compress them a little and then I can put that uh, cover back on and then put the Phillips screws back in And then I just show you that it works. And the camera's blacking out on me again, so I'm trying to, I'm reaching behind there to tap it to t turn on the display. And that's it.